The year was 1864. The United States was mired in a costly and bloody civil war that had split the country over many issues, namely slavery. The Union was gaining traction on its momentum after the recent victory at Gettysburg in 1863 and as General William Tecumseh Sherman began his march to the sea. Our fathers brought forth on this continent. One year earlier, President Abraham Lincoln provoked both sides of the country with his announcement of emancipation freeing all slaves in Confederate lands. However, Slavery continued to thrive on the Confederacy side of the split country despite the paper proclamation from the Great Emancipator. Tucked away in the small Kentucky farming town of Mazelik, a child was born to an indentured couple in a small cabin. Charles Young entered the world on March 12, 1864. Despite being born to enslaved parents, which also made the infant Charles a slave himself, he would never have to experience the stifling degradation of being a slave as he and his parents would make the short trek across the Ohio River into Ohio just a few short years after his birth. Charles Young's childhood began in the Ohio River town of Ripley. Raised by loving parents who valued and knew the importance of an education, he would excel in academics and vault to the top of his class by the time he graduated from the integrated high school in 1881 at age 17. Shortly after the conclusion of his secondary education, he was admitted to the U.S. Military Academy at West Point in 1884. As only the ninth African American to enter the academy at that time, he would endure five long years of constant shunning and open discrimination from fellow students and faculty. Despite losing a year to a poor performance during his freshman or plebe year, he would overcome the obstacles and regain his academic composure to become only the third African American at the time to earn his diploma and commission in 1889. Five years later in 1894, after serving with the Buffalo Soldiers of the 9th Cavalry on the Western Plains in Nebraska and Utah, Young received a detached service assignment to report to Wilberforce University in Wilberforce, Ohio. Once there, he would teach the university's military science and tactics course, which prepared young African-American men for future service in the military and in life as well. He quickly acclimated to the social and intellectual scene as he befriended many, including fellow teaching colleague W.E.B. Du Bois and notable black poet of the era, Paul Lawrence Dunbar. The three of them would forge a friendship which lasted the rest of their lives. After the death of Young's father, Gabriel, in 1894, his mother would relocate to Wilberforce to live with her son as he began his teaching at Wilberforce University. Together, in 1907, they would purchase a house just west of the Wilberforce campus, which he would affectionately nickname Young's Home. The house would become the hub of social events around the university, and the Youngs always welcomed friends, family, and strangers alike. Despite his absences, Young's home would remain the social hub of the university area and Young's permanent residence for the rest of his life. It was also the place where he could escape the harsh reality of the world by losing himself in his music and in his collection of books from around the world. Among the highlights of his stoic military career, he would lead troops heroically in the Philippines during the Philippine-American War and years later in Mexico during the Punitive Expedition. In 1903, he would become the first African-American superintendent of a national park, 
when he and his troopers of the 9th Cavalry managed the lands of Sequoia and General Grant National Parks in Northern California. The work that he and his men achieved that summer exceeded the total amount of work accomplished by the last three summer details of Army troops combined. Many of the roads and trails that he and his men constructed proved so sound that they are still in use today. In addition to being a decorated combat soldier, Young was also one of the first soldiers to be assigned as a military attaché in Haiti and Liberia. Building on the knowledge and construction experience from his days as a National Park Superintendent, he led workers in Liberia to develop and improve the nation's infrastructure. For his impressive and dedicated work in Liberia, Charles Young was awarded the NAACP Spingarn Medal in 1916 which is presented to an African-American who demonstrates exceptional achievement and contributions in their field. Young would go on to serve the country with honor and distinction the rest of his life. Although being medically retired in 1917 for questionable medical reasons, he did not accept the decision and would go on to fight to be put back into active service. Late in 1918, after the war, he was placed back into active duty and then sent back to Liberia to resume his duties as an attaché. While on a field assignment that sent him into Nigeria, he took gravely ill and would succumb to a devastating kidney infection, dying on January 8, 1922. At the urging of his wife and other notable figures in society, Young's body was repatriated to the U.S. in 1923. He received a full military funeral, which included public street processions, culminating in a rare memorial service in the Arlington Memorial Amphitheater. Afterwards, Young would be buried in Arlington National Cemetery alongside the thousands of other heroes who share the solemn lands. In spite of the overt and egregious racism he would have to deal with throughout his life, Charles Young ascended through the military ranks to become one of the most respected leaders of his time. A well-rounded man, with a steadfast devotion to duty. He led by example and inspired generations of new leaders. Then and now. The legacy of Colonel Charles Young lives on. After several decades of lobbying and advocacy from family, friends, and supporters of Colonel Charles Young, Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Christine Warmuth, awarded Charles Young a posthumous promotion to Brigadier General on November 1, 2021. A few months later, on April 29, 2022, with members of the Young family in attendance, the United States Military Academy at West Point hosted a posthumous honorary ceremony to promote Colonel Young to Brigadier General. Long overdue, the promotion ensures that Charles Young will forever be known as General Charles Young. Learn more about Charles Young and the famed Buffalo Soldiers when you visit the park's website at www.nps.gov forward slash chyo and also on the park's social media webpages. pages.